let's have a conversation or I guess it'll be less of a conversation because it's just going to be me talking to you guys watching. So we'll just call it a TED Talks or a Tank TED Talks or a Tank Talks. That works. Oh man, I should copyright that. <laughs> um, anyways, today I want to talk about content creators in the YouTube community and more specifically those content creators that are doing music reaction channels like myself. Now, I've been uploading material to my channel for about nine months now, so not terribly long. But in those nine months, I feel like I've learned a ton, man. I've really taken the advice of a lot of other people that have been doing this. And once I figured out that I wanted to be doing this a lot, I took the time to really learn about a lot of how this works, whether it's the YouTube algorithms or just the reaction scene in general and stuff like that. And lately I've been getting a lot of questions from other people and it's not just other content creators, it's friends on Discord and in the YouTube comments and stuff like that. And people generally just kind of wanted to know how I felt about reactions and monetization and the community and how it works. And the reason I wanted to do this video is because recently my good buddy Chase Carnison did a live stream where he did pretty much exactly this but answered questions live on the spot from the community. And he was brutally honest and open about everything. And it kind of inspired me to want to do the same exact thing. Now to kind of get the flow of this going, I actually took some clips from Chase's live stream where he brought up good points. And I'm going to use those in this video and kind of extrapolate on some of those. I may agree with them. I may not, but I'm going to be honest and I'm going to give you my opinion. And like it was stated at the very beginning of this video, this is all opinion. This is based on my personal experience uploading content on YouTube. None of this stuff is really going to be like factual or scientific evidence unless I provide it for you or tell you I have absolute proof that this is going on. I may be calling out some YouTubers on this. I don't know yet. I haven't filmed the rest of this. My intention here is to not try and diminish anybody's pages or shit on anybody or call anybody out. The only time I'm really going to bring anybody up is if I feel like I need to just for an example for, you know, the whole talk. So I apologize if anybody does not like this or gets offended by anything I'm saying or thinks I'm tearing down one of their favorite reactors. That's not my intention, but this was going to be fun, man. I think I'm going to enjoy sitting and doing this. And when this video is over, for those of you watching this at a later date, you don't have to worry about this. But when this video premiere is over, I'm going to do the same thing Chase did. I'm going to jump on a live stream for at least a half hour and I will do a 100% honest Q&A. Whatever you guys want to know. I mean, anything. It doesn't need to just be this. But I will also do that right after this video is over. So, kick back. Relax. Let's see where this goes. Shall we begin? I have had a lot of people, a lot of reactors, you know who you are. You know who you are. Uh, nobody cared. Um, Tanks kind of mentioned this before. No one cared when I was coming up. I've had people reach out to me now. You don't even know. Half the emails and DMs and shit I get from people who are so self-centered and the back end is nasty. And the reason that I'm not surprised and you shouldn't be either is because it's a business, right? People are making money from this stuff. So, so I feel as though that's a great place to start because I want to talk about something that Chase just brought up. And that's that when our channels were smaller, nobody cared. Nobody could be bothered with us. Nobody gave a shit at all. People put such a huge value on subscriber counts on YouTube. There's a big disconnect between the pages that have lots of subs and the pages that have smaller subs. And what you got to remember is those pages that do have a lot of subs started out from nothing at some point. But a good experience from this was when I first started my channel, I had under 50 subscribers. I sent out about a dozen emails to reaction channels that I watched before I even started my channel. And in this email, I wasn't asking for anything. I wasn't asking for a shout out or a handout or anything. I just wanted to introduce myself. I wanted to get to know the people that were in this community. I sent an email that said, hey, my name's Tank. I've been a roadie in the music industry for about 14 years, but during this pandemic, I started a YouTube channel. I'm gonna be doing reactions. I like your channel a lot and I've watched it and I just wanted to introduce myself and say hi. 
And out of those dozen emails I sent out, I got one response and it was from a guy named Alex who works with Mark from Cardivox Academy. And he wasn't mean or negative by any means, but the email I got back for me personally felt a little dismissive. Uh, he responded to my introduction with an email that just said, hey, I'm Alex. I work with Mark. Is there something we can do for you? And I just thought that was funny. I was like, no, I'm not asking for anything. I just wanted to introduce myself. And he's like, okay, cool, man. You know, we'll, we'll keep an eye on your channel. Um, and that was really it. If I remember right, like I said, not mean or negative, but a little dismissive, a little hesitant. And the funny thing about that is, you know, nine months later doing this, I know both of them now and we talk on discord and stuff and they're great people. I really like them a lot. And you know, another good example of this is Nick Nocturnal. Um, I love Nick's channel. I've been watching it for a while since before I've, you know, been doing stuff on YouTube. And I think the first time I ever reached out to him on Instagram, he was a, a little short and like hesitant. Again, that guarded feel. And it's funny now because we've gotten to know each other. We've worked on a project together and she's just another great guy. But I really kind of understand that hesitance and that that guard up now that I've been doing this for a bit because there are like so many sharks in this scene where it's a very what's in it for me mentality and I'm not even gonna lie like I used to be a very selfish person I used to always have that what's in it for me mentality and as I grew older I changed that I started doing a more what can I do for you rather than what's in it for me and I found that just my overall vibe in life and the positivity that I have is so much better. And that's what I like to do, but I do see it in the community. It's everywhere, man. It's very self-serving. It's very selfish. Um, there are people that just want shout outs for nothing and stuff like that. And, you know, as Chase also brought up, like these reactors that reach out, dude, I can't tell you how many messages I get a week from the same fucking people like, it's like they forgot that they already messaged me, but I get messages from reactors that don't even introduce themselves that just say, hey, let's do a video together. And that's great. That's well and cool. We should all be able to work together because it's, it's fucking YouTube, man. It's not like one of you guys is going to watch my channel and not watch another channel. Like people like to see the reactions of other people. The internet's a big place. There's plenty of internet to go around. But for me... I actually want to get to know people and build friendships. And on top of all that, I don't know who the fuck you are. And I don't mean that in a like demeaning way, like, oh, who are you? I have more subs. I mean, I don't know what kind of person you are. I don't know if I want to attach my name to your channel. And that's why I actually want to get to know people and build friendships with people. I would appreciate it way more if somebody were to just send me a message and introduce themselves. And you know, that's exactly what Chase did to me. That's why we're such good friends. Chase left a comment on one of my videos, like my first month of YouTube and was just like, Hey man, really like your videos. Seem like a cool dude. Keep up the good work. Messaged each other, got to know each other. We share a discord server now and we're really good friends. And I'm not talking YouTube. I'm talking, we are friends. We have talked outside of, you know, the whole internet world. We genuinely care about each other. He's a great person. I love him to death. Those are the kind of relationships I would like to build rather than these really superficial, like, you know, hey, let's be on each other's video to get some views. But I also get that because as it was mentioned, this is a business. People are trying to make money. And, you know, I'll, I'll talk a lot more about that later. But there is a whole argument that could be made about everything I just said is bullshit because these people are just trying to market themselves, which could be true, but we can get into more of that in a little bit. But the scene is so clicky and negative and selfish and self-driven. I just cannot be asked with it. Um, I just don't care. So I don't know if um, clicky is the word I would have chose. Uh, usually when I think clicks, I think like large groups of people that are very like, you can't sit with us, very exclusive, push people out. Um, it's more of an individual basis that I see on YouTube. Like I said, it's more of the disconnect between the channels that have a lot of subs and the channels that have a few subs. Um, that's kind of where the, I guess, clickiness would come from is 
I guess the click is the people with lots of subs, but I do see the negativity and it's fucking insane sometimes, man. I have literally seen reactors film and publish diss videos about each other. Like, what kind of high school bullshit is that? And on top of all that kind of stuff, like, if you get the link to somebody's Discord, you can join that Discord and see all these public posts. I've joined other YouTube reactors Discord servers and see the kind of shit talk that they engage with about other people with their communities and stuff like that. Um, I've seen people's Discord communities talk about how, hey, go and dislike every other reactor's video so we can like make it look like the guy we like has more views and stuff. It's fucking weird, man. It's really weird. Um, and on top of all that, it's like, why waste the energy, man? Like, like I put at the beginning of the video, like what people think about me is none of my business. I don't lose sleep over it at all. Like if somebody chooses that they don't like me based off one of my YouTube videos and has something bad to say, that's their negative energy. That's their baggage to carry, man. They're worrying about me. I'm not worrying about what they think. I just, you know, I can't tell people what to do, but I feel like that's how everybody should be. Like, and it's the internet, man. Like, it's the internet. We all know how the internet is. People love to talk shit for no reason other than they want attention. Um, but on top of all that, I do see the self-driven, selfish, self-serving motives with a lot of uh, YouTube content creators. And a lot of the times they try and disguise it as more positive stuff, expecting something in return. So like I've been, you know, mentioned in tweets before or brought up in other people's videos and people aren't dumb, man. You can clearly see when somebody is expecting something in return, especially when there's somebody that I've never interacted with ever and I've never spoken to and they're tagging me in posts or they're shouting me out in their videos, it's because they're expecting me to do that in return. Now, some of you might think I'm an asshole for not doing that, but it goes back to what I was saying. I don't know who some of these people are as people. They never took the time to actually engage in an actual conversation other than purely business stuff on YouTube. And again, I don't want to associate with people who I don't know because I don't know what kind of person that they are. And you know what? There's a lot of people that I've tried to reach out to and they haven't responded. But at the same time, some of these people, to be fair, some of these people that have shouted me out, I haven't messaged them to get to know them either because I've been so turned off by what I see them doing where they're clearly trying to get me or other people to shout them out in return just for bringing us up randomly in conversation. Um, I think this community would be a lot better if everybody just got to know each other and wanted to work together rather than being self-serving. Um, my visa conditions don't allow me to earn an income from any of the platforms that I'm on. I don't get paid for this. I don't, this is not my job. I don't get money from doing reactions. So there's obviously no need for me to confirm that because why would anybody make that up? But yes, because Chase's visa issues he's having, he can't monetize anything on YouTube, on Patreon, Twitch, nothing. And he's still doing all these videos because he enjoys doing it. Now, I feel like I could do a whole separate video on monetization and copyright claims and all that stuff. So I'm going to keep this simple, but... I think there's a misconception with a lot of the YouTube community that reactors are making a lot more money than they are. Now, there are some reactors that have been very successful. They're good at fighting copyrights. They have lawyers. They are making decent money. But the vast majority of us really are not. Um, I only know this because I was talking to Chase about it the other day. And I will put a screenshot up so you guys can see it. But this month on YouTube, what's today? The 27th. Um, I have made $400 off ad revenue just this month, uh, on YouTube, 400 bucks, not a lot, but the most insane number about all of that is the money that I've made in ad revenue for music publishers. When you take in ad revenue and you have a copyright claim, all that ad revenue, instead of going to you, goes to the person who holds the copyright, which is the music publishers. So out of the over 200 videos I have, I have so many copyrights that recently I looked 
I have made over $60,000 for music publishers. And I've made a small fraction of that. That's insane, man. Um, yes, there are other sources of income. Uh, Twitch, Patreon, stuff like that. A lot of YouTubers also use those forms of ad revenue. And Patreon for me, I know I've seen people like kind of shit on it. And they're like, dude, why the fuck would I sign up for a Patreon for a reactor? For me... In my situation, I kind of look at Patreon as like the same way you'd like tip a waiter at a restaurant. Like, you know, if you enjoy the content and stuff like that and you want to help out in any way, I mean, it's there. But I, I'll never charge people straight up for like my reactions and stuff like that. And then, you know, streaming on Twitch, you can make a little bit of ad revenue and stuff like that too. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff that prevents reactors from monetizing and mostly copyrights. And again, I'm not going to get into it. I could spend so much time talking about the copyrights, but I'll tell you right now, man, I knew very well coming into this, that copyrights were going to be a thing. Like I work in the music industry. I'm aware that I'm using somebody else's copywritten material in my videos. I know that. Um, but there's an interesting trade-off that could be made in an argument. It's like, a lot of these reactors are exposing a lot of bands to people that might not see them. And is that marketing worth it to the publishers? There are some labels that are awesome, man. They are some labels and some publishers, they get it. They see the trade-off that they're getting from exposure for their bands and making new fans and selling records and selling t-shirts and all that. And they're willing to work with some of these reactors and give them a break on some of the copyrights and stuff like that. But it's very rare. It's very rare. And then you've got things like paid product placements and paid ads and stuff like that, which I have still yet to do on my channel, mainly because I don't know, I hate seeing it on other videos that I'm watching. So I don't want to do that to people that are watching mine. It's like people are coming here to, you know, watch music reactions and learn about gear and learn about production and stuff that happens on the road and stuff like that. It's like, why in the middle of that do you want to see an ad for a product that has nothing to fucking do with what I'm talking about? And I, dude, I get them multiple times a week. I get, I've, dude, I've gotten ads for Manscaped, Raid Shadow Legends, tons of all this other bullshit. And it's just like, it makes no sense for me to plug that stuff in my videos at all. And, you know, there are some big reactors that I've seen, they've like, They've made videos trying to tell people like, oh, I'm not making any money. Do like people with hundreds of thousands of subs are making videos saying like, I'm not making any money on YouTube because of copyrights and blah, blah, blah. I have a video that has hundreds of thousands of views and I haven't made a cent. They're not lying. But what they're not telling you is how much they've made for the paid advertisement in that video. We're talking like thousands of dollars at a time. So you know, people stretch the truth a lot, but, um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I feel like I could spend so much more time talking about monetization and all that stuff, but we'll just wrap that up there. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not in his head. I don't know what he, he's, I mean, it's hard to believe some of the stuff he's saying he's never heard before. I get that. I'm not in his head. I don't know what he's heard. I don't know what he's heard. Um, he's an entertainment guy. It's what he does. And there's nothing wrong with that. So in that last clip, somebody had asked Chase about Alex Hefner and had said something about how Alex Hefner's videos seem like fake, like, you know, he's seen him before and stuff like that. And that was what Chase was saying. And, you know, Alex is one of the most brought up YouTube reactors when people are talking about the reaction scene and stuff like that, because he's done very well and he's been around for a while. And, you know... I've, I've talked about him on my discord with people and, you know, in the interest of, you know, not talking behind his back, I'll say exactly what I've said. And there are some of his videos that I look at and I'm like, man, I find this kind of unbelievable. And, you know, when you're saying it's your first time hearing fucking Metallica or, you know, stuff like that, like there are certain artists that have transcended pop culture that are so big, I find it impossible when people say they've never heard them before. Now, do I know that for sure? Absolutely not. I, I don't know what, what's in his head. I don't know what his life's been like. But what I will say about Alex, whether he's heard these things before or not, 
Chase made a good point. He is an entertainment guy and there's nothing wrong with that at all. He has done a wonderful, masterful job at figuring out what works for him on YouTube. It's kind of genius, really. Like he tags things really well. He has the titles really well. Like he's marketed it really well to specific groups of people all over YouTube. Like you see when he reacts to metal videos, he'll say, oh, hip hop head reacts to when he reacts to hip hop videos. I've seen him put metal head reacts to like it's almost those clickbaity titles that are so genius that it gets everybody watching them. And he's done a very, very good job, man. He's got, I think, over 600,000 subs, 700,000 subs, something like that. So I've got to give the guy credit totally. Now, me personally, um, his videos don't do a ton for me because it's, you know, a lot of the same exaggerated stuff when he watches stuff. And there are a lot of reactors that do that. And I will say... He's probably one of the most copied reactors, hands down. You see a lot of other reactors do the same stuff that he's doing, often the same videos around the same time, the same mannerisms, the same phrases. But I just want to bring it back to him being an entertainer. Chase and I have always said there's two different types of reactors. There's the reactors that actually want to talk about stuff, that try and educate. You got vocal coaches, you got musicians, you got a fuckload of both of them, actually. And then you've got people that are phenomenal entertainers people like alex people like no life shack who's fucking awesome too and he's got a lot of knowledge with a lot of that kind of music but he's also an incredible entertainer and there's a place for that on youtube there's a reactor for everybody somebody on one of my twitch streams recently compared reactors to street performers you're walking down a street you see a bunch of people performing on the street not everybody might catch your eye but one of them might, and that's kind of how the reactors on YouTube are. There's people that are entertaining to different groups of people and to different people that are watching. That's perfectly, totally fine. Um, are you guessing that pre-reactor is watching the video first offline? No, never done that because that's lying. I don't like liars. I can tell you a lot of people do. I can tell you a lot of people do. God, you would be shocked at the amount of people that bullshit their way through this come on half of this is half of the people out there wrapping this bullshit up it's lies it's nonsense they've heard it before they're selling you a product everyone's selling something sometimes that something is themselves i've been waiting for this one man because i bring this up a lot man i call this out a lot it is very clear extremely clear that a lot of people that are doing reactions on youtube have seen it before and are trying to play it off like they haven't. I've literally seen other people mouthing the lyrics, not realizing they're doing it. I've seen people do like drum fills in songs that are starting off that they, if it was the first time they've heard it, there's no fucking way they would know that there. But like Chase said, people are selling a product. Sometimes that product is themselves. It goes back to the entertainer thing. There's people that are trying to entertain. Now let's talk about myself for a minute. I am being 100% genuine all the reactions that I do on this channel, if I say I've never seen them before, I've never seen them before. I have specifically noted in videos if I've heard the song before or I've never heard the video. I have turned down reaction requests that I know would get so many fucking views because I've heard it and I've seen it and I don't want to be disingenuous. Rammstein, a, every day, a dozen requests. People want me to watch Duhast. Dude, I heard Duhast in 1998. I've seen Rammstein in concert so many times. And same thing with like Demolisher by Slaughter to Prevail. Another huge reaction video. I heard it before I started my channel. And I'm not going to do a reaction to it and act like I haven't seen it before. Now, there are people that have called me out um, being like, oh, there's no way you haven't heard this. Uh, it happened with like Nightwish and stuff like that. Here's the thing, man. A lot of these bands are huge in Europe, but they don't get a lot of exposure here. And there are certain genres of music that I never got into. I never really got into power metal. And when I did Blind Guardian and Halloween and stuff, people are like, you're a metalhead and you've never heard this? That's bullshit. And a lot of people try to prove that I'm lying by mentioning how accurate I am with gear information. There's like, there's no way you would know this unless you've watched this before. Let me tell you how I know this. 14 years touring in the music industry. It's the same way that auto mechanics know everything about cars. I know nothing about cars at all. And it always blows my mind when I hear somebody talking about cars that can 
tell you every single part in it, where it goes, how they're built, all that stuff. That's the same thing with me and gear. It's been my profession for years. That's why I know these things. Now, moving on to other reactors, there's definitely cues that I've noticed from other people in videos that are noticeable, body language, stuff like that. There's actually one, I'm, out, I'm gonna edit this, and I'm gonna bring this up. There's one that I specifically wanna bring up. Now, again, this is not fact. I do not have undeniable proof that the guy that I'm gonna mention has heard this song before, but I do wanna show you a few video clips and kind of point out what I'm talking about. So Immortal by Lorna Shore was a really big reaction video and I watched quite a few of them and stuff like that. And for anybody that's familiar with that song, when you get to the bridge where there's those low gutturals and it's super heavy, it's so shocking and ridiculous that it takes you back for a second. There are certain points in music and reaction times where it takes your brain a second to process what you're actually hearing and seeing and stuff like that. Now, I just want to pull up a few clips and I'll show you the bridge part of that song. I'll just pull up Alex Hefner, Chase, myself, Tulip Mafia. Those are good examples. I'll show you the bridge parts of those songs and you can see the delayed response in each of these reactions, trying to figure out what's going on when that bridge actually hits. kidding me? Oh. Now I want to show you a clip by another reactor, D. Gibby, another highly entertaining dude that is doing very well on reactions on YouTube. However, I have seen some of his videos like I said, could be wrong. This is opinion. I do not have undeniable proof, but I see some of the body language responses and it kind of shows that he's probably screened this before he did a reaction to it. And I'm not trying to make an example out of him. I'm just, I, it's the only one I can think of off the top of my head. There are a lot of reactors that do this. Like I said, people that lip sync, people that do drum fills and stuff, but let's watch the same part of that reaction on his video that he did. You notice how fast that response is? Like right when it hits, it was literally like a quarter of a second. I just find it hard to believe that when that happens, you would have that quick of a response. I mean, fuck, it took me a couple seconds to really realize what was going on. And you can see it in Alex's video and Chase's video and Tulip Mafia's video. That's just an example of the things I'm talking about where it's that entertainment value. You know what? If he's seen the video before and he's comfortable doing that, that's totally fucking fine, man. It doesn't bother me at all. He's got way more subs on his channel than I do, so he's obviously doing something right. And like I said, there are entertainment reactors and there are educational reactors, and he's definitely a very entertaining reactor. Um, here's another thing. Reactors, charging for reactions. Let's talk about this. Here's the thing. If you are, if you have a unique ability to entertain or provide education and somebody says to you, here's my song or here's a song, um, please, could you provide me detailed feedback one-on-one -on -one about whatever the thing is you're asking? Well, that's called producing and that should be paid for. That should be paid for because that's called producing and that's a job. But if you don't have the ability to add significant value to a song and you're charging $500 upwards and $150 and $200 for a song to react to, get the fuck out of my face. I don't do pay to play because I think it's I think it's unfair to people who can't afford it. I think this platform is a free platform, you know, with advertising, of course, that's how you get paid. This is another one that I've talked with Chase at length about, man, the whole paid reaction thing. And, you know, I have a pretty strong opinion about it. Um, and I'll give you my opinion and then I'll mention a few other things. But like, 
I'll never do it ever. And the reason I won't do it is because I feel the second you take money to do a reaction, you tarnish any kind of honesty and integrity in your video. And what I mean by that is, let's say a management company offers me money to react to one of their bands that they want to get exposure to. If I'm honest and I didn't like it and I say I didn't like it, they might get pissed off and they might say, we paid you and you didn't say you loved it. But then if people found out I got paid to do it and I did like it, then people would be like, well, he's only saying he liked it because he got paid. And, you know, I've had people accuse me of being a, like a pay to play reactor, but I think anybody who follows this channel would know that's bullshit. The same thing with Chase as well. Like, you know, you look at other reactors that have Patreon and they do have, um, you know, tiers where you pay more and you get a reaction request a week and stuff like that. And like, I never wanted to do that because I didn't want anybody having the final say in any of the content that I ever do. I wanted to have the final say with a heavily weighted opinion from you guys in the community and the suggestions that you give me. Like the problem with uh, having Patreon tiers where people get to pick your content. And I say this because I've heard this from other reactors that have told me is that if you have so many of those tiers that you've sold, then you start getting your entire month or week or whatever filled up by reactions that are being picked for you by other people. And then you get people that are fans of certain bands that pick the same songs over and over. And there are some reactors that they really go ham on the pay to play stuff, like the paid reactions. Um, you know, a good example of that is uh, the Wolf Hunters. They are a band that does a reaction channel and they have a big page of different reactions that you can like, or tiers that you can pay for, for reactions on like, which one of the band members you want to react to and all this. And they crank out videos, man, where we've talked about the entertainment reactors and the educational reactors. This might be another form of just supplemental income to them. I don't know. I don't know them as people. I seen some of their videos, but with how many videos they're cranking out and the different tiers that they have for videos and stuff like that, this may just be a way for them to make income while the band can't do anything because of COVID and stuff like that. And if that's the case, that's totally cool. I just think people should be fucking honest about it rather than taking people's money and then literally just sitting through a video and watching it and barely saying anything. Just my opinion again, but I will never do paid reactions ever, guys. It's not going to happen. I think it's bullshit. And obviously, you can see Chase does too. Chase, I'm going to call it now. Reactors are going to react to this video. Yeah, then react. React the fuck away. Do what you want. Is there better? And also, some of you guys aren't cool. I have one rule for you. Behave on the internet like you would in real life and we'll be fine. Don't go on the internet and be a keyboard warrior and sit there and tick, 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 tick and feel brave. If you say, if someone say, <laughs> half the shit that people say to me, they're telling me to do horrible things to myself in the most horrible way. I, it's mad. It's fucking mad. If you did that to me in public, it's not going to go well. And none of it's going to go well for you. You wouldn't jump into a conversation. You wouldn't walk up to some strangers and just say, blah, blah, blah. You just wouldn't do it because it's not going to go well. Yeah, I paused too much. Yes, I paused at the wrong time. I talk too much. I get it. I'm, I hear you. I get it. I get it. Also, don't care because in my video, I'll do what the hell I want. I'm actually really stoked about the community that Chase and I have on our Discord and that I have on this page. The overwhelming majority of you guys that are on this channel are great, man. I've gotten to know a lot of you guys very well. I know a lot of you by first name, even if I just see your handle in the chat and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm really proud of it, man. I think there's some wonderful people on here. Now, there are some absolute fucking dickheads on here too. Now, it is a minority of the people. And I think it's mostly just trolls too, but you know... We get these comments every now and then on videos where people just talk shit to talk shit. And, you know, Chase brings up a good point. It's all this stuff that, like, these people would never say this to your face. It's just people that are on the internet trying to get a rise out of people. And, you know, 
I've been called tons of weird stuff and I was going to do a video with like hate comments before, but it's like, I kind of gave up on taking screenshots of them. Cause I just don't give a shit anymore because you know, like I said, the overwhelming amount of our community in the comments are great and I enjoy it. But like, there are some comments sometimes that just blow my fucking mind. And like where Chase was saying at the end, he's like, yes, I know I paused too much and blah, blah, blah. That's the funniest one to me is when somebody's like, dude, you need to pause less and just shut the fuck up. Nobody cares about the gear. Like, People just want to watch the video. Dude, if you guys want to watch the video, go to the band's page, watch the fucking video. What are you doing on a reaction channel? But on top of that, man, um, I've always said where I draw the line in the sand is anything racist, homophobic, transphobic, sexist, xenophobic. I, I do not put up with that shit on my channel. I will delete comments. I don't care. You can cry free speech all you want. It's my channel. I will delete that shit immediately. I had to go on a deleting rampage on my Lil Nas X reaction. Um, what kills me sometimes as well is when we do reactions to female fronted bands. Let's just take Ginger, for example. One out of every 10 comments, and it happens in the live chats too, is some guy that's got a comment about how hot Tatiana is or how much he wants to bang her or something like that. Grow the fuck up people seriously like nobody gives a shit man like yes we all have eyes we can see she's an attractive woman but we're watching a band we're watching the music let's talk about her voice let's talk about what she's doing in the band like i'm not putting up with that shit i hate it i think it's fucking stupid we're not in high school i'm not putting up with that shit and i gotta give a shout out to the mods that we have on our channels too because they do a great job at getting rid of that stuff if they see it in our live chats but be civil guys be kind to each other that's all we ask you guys to do in our comment sections. How do you cope with all the negativity? I don't, I just, yeah, I do this. I used to be bothered by it. I'll be honest. I used to be bothered. I'd be lying if I said it wasn't um, hurtful or just like shitty to see. But I mean, what, what are you trying to do? You're trying to get, I understand COVID happened. People are tired, bored, sad. Uh, angry, angry is a big one. Angry, emotional, and they don't know where to go. And they they're looking at. They go on the internet. And they just fucking. Rah, they just have. They just need an out there. They want eyes. They want people to look at them for saying a the thing. So they say the thing they think will get people to look at them. I'll be honest. The the negative, hateful comments really never did anything to me at all because. Um... I don't know who the fuck you guys are half the time for those of you that are leaving shitty comments and you guys don't know me either. Like aside from just looking at me on a screen, so many people forget that like we're people like we live lives outside of this. Like I have a family, I have a wife, I have a daughter, I have dogs, I have a house. Like I have other things to worry about other than YouTube. And you know, when I started YouTube as well, and I think a lot of other reactors are probably the same way, you realize you're putting yourself on the internet. Like, you, you, like you're going to get it. It's going to happen. You're putting yourself out there. People can say whatever they want to say, and it's, you know, it's on you to figure out how you want to handle that. And to Chase's point, yeah, there's like, there's, there's, I mean, well, it's, it's the fucking internet, man. Like I said before, we all know how the internet works. There's people that just want to get on here to get a rise out of people. They'll say whatever they want to because they want to be seen and they want to be heard. I've actually seen people leave comments on Chase's channel, on my channel, not thinking that we actually read comments, which I don't respond to everything, but I read everything, every single comment. I see them. There's people that leave us like really shitty comments thinking that we won't see them or respond. I've had a guy leave me a comment once before talking shit. And when I responded to him like a sarcastic asshole, he literally was just like, oh, LOL, LOL. I didn't actually think that you read these. Sorry, dude. Like, okay. Like, but there are still people that just want to be shitheads to be shitheads. Cause for whatever reason, it makes them feel better to talk shit to random people on the internet. I get, I love dedicated fans. I love fans who are super dedicated, who are like, that's my band. I ride or die for them. Don't I? Just stop with the whole like bandmate or the best musicians in the world. Well, they aren't. They just simply aren't. They're not even close. They are ultra talented, incredible songwriters, fantastic songs. Many, many people can play this stuff. I could play this stuff. I don't even practice. But they are incredible as a band. Nightwish. There's, this doesn't look like Nightwish. This song is not. Yeah, get the fuck off. Get, get, come on, calm down. Calm down. 
This one kind of drives me nuts because I try really hard not to let it affect me and what I think about other bands. But sometimes it's difficult. Um, we do. There are certain fan bases for bands that are so extreme and so diehard. And that's great, man. It's great that you're passionate about the band you like. But when you're going on every other video that reactors are doing and then complaining that it's not the band you like, like I'm just going to use Nightwish as the example. I have people that will comment on my other videos that I do that aren't Nightwish. That'll be like, this is shit. Nightwish is way better. Dude, what? kind of musical journey are you going to have if you're comparing everything you listen to to your already established favorite band like and then even inside the nightwish community there's fans that argue about what singer's better and then if a reactor says they like one of the singers people will shit on them for liking the other singer and there's a lot of other fan bases like that too man and there's um a lot of the times you'll see a lot of comments from people that get upset that we haven't reacted to more videos of that band. And I'll tell you right now, guys, like I want to get to all these bands and all these videos. There's a lot of music in the world, but when you start getting aggressive and shitty in our comments about like, you're trying to push us and force us into checking out a band. It makes us not want to do it. Honestly. Um, you know, one of the examples I have of that in real life is uh, uh, Volbeat. I've still to this day, maybe I've heard one of their songs in passing somewhere, but I've never actually sat down and listened to Volbeat because I had a friend that was so fucking obsessed with them. That's all she talked about ever was how good they were and how they're better than every other band. And she equated everything in her life to Volbeat. She tied him in somehow. And it was like, so overbearing that it made me dislike the band without ever hearing them. And I, I know that sounds stupid because I should listen to them and give them a try, but like it happens. Like I know some of you guys have been annoyed by hearing too much about something too. And you know, that does happen. I mean, music is totally subjective, man. And that is what is so cool about it. If we all liked the same shit, it would be super, super boring. There's different bands for different people. People have different tastes. It's all good, man. Well, that about wraps it up. We've been sitting here for a while. Um, I obviously haven't edited this video yet, so I don't know how long it's going to be, but I would estimate it's probably going to be over a half hour. So if you're still watching me talk right now, thank you very much for watching. If you guys have any comments, questions, you think I'm off base about something, leave them in the comments below, man. Let's have a conversation about this stuff. I mean, this was super fun for me to do. It was really cathartic. It was kind of cool to get some of this out, man. And as a reminder, we're going to be doing a live stream right after this Q&A with you guys. Ask whatever you want. If you're watching this video at a later date. You can see the replay of it. And if you're on social media, I'll drop my handle down here at tank the tech. You can find me anywhere. It is currently 3.30 a.m. I'm finally done doing this. I'm going to get some sleep. I will see you guys very soon.